So I just came back from a surf trip in the Maldives and I wanted to give my albeit anecdotal experience from 10 days there and also talking to people that have spent a lot more time there. You know, what are the waves like? How much does it cost? Is it any good? All of that good stuff. So let's jump straight into it. I didn't actually realize that the Maldives are actually really big. They are 800 kilometers, about 500 miles north to south, made up of 26 atolls and they cover something like 90,000 square kilometers. So there's a lot of space. They usually split up into the northern atolls and the southern atolls. I think the southern atolls are more exposed to swell, but Male, where you fly into, is in the northern atolls. So going south takes longer, it's probably more expensive, usually boat charters. I stayed in the northern atolls in an island called Thulasdu, which is one of the more popular surf spots there. The season in the Maldives is really pronounced. So it runs from March till October. And from what I've heard, unlike Indonesia, where you can go in the off season and you can still get reasonable surf, in the off season in the Maldives, you are highly likely to turn up and there be nothing. So when I was in Sri Lanka in January and February, there were people that worked in the surf industry in the Maldives who were spending a month in Sri Lanka because there was nothing to do. There was, there was no bookings, there were no waves in the Maldives. So take that into account. And then the final quick bit is that most of the waves are public. There are some waves that you might have seen that are private. For instance, Himafushi, um, there's a surf camp called Lowy's and they have a left and you're only allowed to surf it if you stay at Lowy's. I think you can buy day passes, but again, it's something to take into account. So moving on to Thulasdu, the main break at Thulasdu is called Cokes, and it's one of the more famous waves in the area, and it's a hell of a wave, actually. Getting in and out of the wave, you can cross a small channel to a, to a tiny island right in front of the wave, but bear in mind that it can be really, really shallow. There's a lot of current there, and I stood on a sea urchin, my friend stood on a sea urchin, I dinged one of my boards in the rocks there. So in the end, I just paddled out from the main beach and it's about a five to 10 minute paddle round. I just thought, you know, the risk of getting caught in the current and dinging your board or stepping on a sea urchin wasn't worth it. I'd just rather do the paddle. I also, when I was going back in from Cokes, I tended to paddle round because as the white water pushes you, it pushes you towards the right where there's more rocks. And I think I had a clip of somebody going in and you can see the rocks coming out of the water. So most people paddle straight to the island. Um, that's an option. But again, stood on a sea urchin there, so I was having none of it. The wave itself is a right-hander. It didn't link up fully when we were there, but it's got space for turns. It has bow sections, mainly at the end. I got the most barrels I've ever got in sessions and I am a terrible barrel rider. So they were mainly luck, but it was, it was really good. The main barrel section at the end, that's where it gets really shallow and you can get caught there. And if you get caught inside there, often you just have to turn around and take the white water in and paddle back around in shame, which I had to do a couple of times. One thing to note with Cokes is that you have to wait a lot longer than you think for the waves to sort of catch up with you. I tend to sort of race in front of the wave and, and get caught out, but better surfers, this one Australian guy was like, I just got an amazing barrel, but you have to have the patience of a monk, he said. So do you have to sort of stall and wait for the wave to fold over, theoretically. If you're talking about barrels, the barrels are very almondy, so you have to stay really, really high. There was one particular wave where I had the GoPro in my mouth, and I was behind the peak and I thought, I'm just gonna shoot through this. And I could see the exit, it was only very quick, but I just got clipped because I was too low. So that's something to bear in mind. Maybe I just need to become a better surfer, probably. And then across the channel from Thulasdu is a left-hander called Chickens. And you can get a boat out, it takes a few minutes. Um, I think it's five or $10 to get a return boat you just tell them when to come back or you sort of wave your board and you jump on a boat and it'll take you back that guy must make a lot of money because it genuinely takes a few minutes to cross the channel that wave was surprisingly good it's a softer takeoff than cokes but it walls up um, and again there's a bow section at the end apparently when the swell sort of lines up it barrels the whole way and you get the longest barrels in the Maldives or some of the longest barrels in the Maldives. It's also where I heard of the most manta ray sightings in the lineup. 
but unfortunately I didn't see any. I had to pay for a snorkeling trip to go and see mantas. So if you just want to stay in Thulasdu, um, you can surf cokes and chickens and you have a right and a left. Um, a lot of people just do that. You could spend 10 days there and just surf those waves. Neither of them are really beginner's waves. There is a smaller wave that people surf. I forgot the name of it, just from the sort of the main bay at Thulasdu. But bear in mind, it does get quite shallow there. And then there's also a couple of waves um, past Himafushi um, called Jailbreaks and Sultans. And they are long right-handers. Again, you sort of have a lot of time to to do turns. I think the magic seaweed description of Sultans was like, it never ever closes out. I was lucky because I turned up and it was the biggest swell of the season. So there were closeouts there, but the really, really fun wave. Sultans has probably got sort of a punchier um, second half of the wave. And then Jailbreaks just lines up the whole way, which is, which is great. One thing about both Sultans and Jailbreaks is that the boats you need a minimum of five people and it's ten dollars each so you would think that it was fifty dollars for the boat and if you had eight people then you would just still pay fifty dollars but there's no there's no discount everybody just pays ten dollars so we tried to argue the case but the guy was having none of it sultans and jail breaks takes about 20 minutes on the boat each way so relatively easy you go down to the beach and ask the guy with the boat there um, and he'll tell you if there's enough people or if you've got five people you can go straight away um, it's logistically it's very very simple we actually surfed gel breaks as the swell was hitting and the first sort of part of the session was really good and the, there was like decent walls and then it's suddenly picked up and got reasonably large so i took the gopro out and um only got a couple of photos but that was a fun session mid tide tended to be the best at most of the waves especially full tide they all tend to get a bit too fat at cokes especially i mean there's current at all of them but at cokes i couldn't work it out sometimes there would be current our first session there the current suddenly switched and it was like battle royale it was whoever could was willing to paddle for the longest to stay in position got the waves and eventually most people just got sucked down the reef and went in so that's that can be frustrating but that only happened once in 10 days so it wasn't too bad but it was it was always a topic when people came back in everybody was like how's the current and whilst they're not necessarily beginner waves um, and the water's so clear that obviously you can see the reef below you it, it never felt super shallow. Obviously that depends on the swell and the tide, but I never hit the reef in 10 days. It's certainly not like places in Indonesia where um, that's a real threat, which is nice. It sort of, it, it gives you a bit of leeway, I suppose. The other thing is that ding repair is um, hard to come by, especially on Thulasdu. I didn't get any of my boards fixed, but my friend did and it took four or five days and they did a not great job. Oh, and a final thing, I've been lucky enough to spend the better part of the last two years in the tropics. The sun in the Maldives has got to be the strongest sun I've ever experienced anywhere. It is brutal. So take lots and lots of sun cream, strong factor or a rash vest. Yeah, it's, you will get burnt real quick. In general, it was one of the most picturesque places I've ever surfed and I actually went to the Maldives just because it's really cheap to fly from KL to Male and then getting the boats from Male to Thulasdu costs like $30 each way. I was looking ahead and you can fly from KL to Male for $150, about maybe $200 return, which is crazy for a nearly five hour flight, but expect white sand beaches, crystal clear water, a lot of fish in the in the sea. If you haven't seen my video about snorkeling, watch it because again, I've fallen foul to it many times, but it's worth going snorkeling, especially at the fish tank. It is genuinely like swimming in an aquarium. I'm sure you can get sort of more detailed explanation of each individual wave from people that know a lot better, but that, that was my sort of experience and I thought the Maldives were just going to be white sands and clear water, which is beautiful, but yeah, it, it can get a little bit samey, but I was incredibly surprised um, by 
the quality of the waves. I, I really enjoyed all of the waves actually. Uh, chickens was the biggest surprise. I thought that that was going to be, um, well, it's a left-hander, arm regular, but it was, it was really, really good. I mean, the title Surfing in the Maldives is sort of misleading because it's Thullers do and the surrounding area. They're, I mean, 26 atolls and 800 kilometers north to south, there are going to be a lot of waves and boat charters might be a really good option, especially for the southern atolls. But yeah, I was just going to the Maldives because I'd never been and I thought I'd check it out. I didn't think the surf was going to be that good. I think we were lucky with the swell, but I wouldn't even say I was pleasantly surprised. Put it this way, I thought it was going to be a one-time trip. I'm now trying to figure out how I can go back there and spend perhaps a little bit longer. My next video, I'm going to talk about sort of costs and if you can actually do the Maldives on the cheap, but in terms of quick accommodation pricing, it's about 50 to 70 US dollars um, a night, which albeit is not cheap, um, it's not crazy, crazy expensive. If anybody's been there, has any other tips, let me know. If you disagree with me, let me know. And yeah, I hope it helps for anybody that's um, going to the Maldives. Bye bye.